Uh, I'll give you a brief introduction about myself. I graduated as a civil and environmental engineer from the American University in Beirut. I have a PMP certification as well as supply chain management diploma from Canada. I have over nine years of experience in the infrastructure industry, out of which six years in Qatar in the new Doha International Airport and some major highway projects. I joined Autodesk four, almost four years ago. I am based in Dubai office and I'm covering the Middle East region and Africa. Okay, today's session is about uh, vehicle tracking, the one that my colleague uh, Salvatore talked about. We're gonna explore the whole capabilities of Autodesk vehicle tracking for buildings, for infrastructure, for uh, vehicle movements, and we'll see what we can do with it all the way. So, the session objectives is basically to understand the major capabilities of this powerful tool or plugin that works uh, with AutoCAD Civil 3D and other Autodesk tools. Uh, specifically, regarding roundabout design, we're gonna see how we can design roundabouts in 2D and 3D. We're gonna talk about parking design, as well as swift path analysis, analyzing the movement of different types of vehicle, ranging from cars to trucks to light tram and even uh, airplanes. And definitely not to mention, not to miss, is the 3D animation capability of vehicle tracking. So whatever you simulate in terms of vehicle movements, you can actually uh, animate it in 3D and then export it as a video for your presentations or uh, project uh, collaboration meetings. Okay, so Autodesk Vehicle Tracking, for those of you who don't know about it, is a plugin, it's a software, that runs on both, on AutoCAD tools, on top of AutoCAD, and also a Bentley MicroStation. So either or, whatever, whatever platform you are using, you can utilize uh, Autodesk Vehicle Tracking. And it's very easy to install and download, I'm gonna show you how you can do so. Once you, are, you download the uh, app or the plugin and you install it, you're gonna have a dedicated tab for vehicle tracking inside of your AutoCAD or AutoCAD Civil 3D platform for you to start utilizing in your designs. And as Salvatore showed you earlier, we have the settings tab here, we have the swept path analysis here where you can simulate the movement of vehicles and analyze their clashes. We have the parking uh, panel and we have the roundabout panel as well. And to the very right of the screen, you have the animation panel where you can create those uh, stunning animations and export them as videos. Okay, so which tools does this uh, plugin work with? With the 2018 release, the latest release of vehicle tracking, and if you have a 64-bit machine, you can run it on AutoCAD uh, 2018, you can run it on AutoCAD architecture for architects who are using AutoCAD architecture, and definitely on top of Civil 3D. There is a lot of integration between the two, as we'll see in the upcoming slides. And once we talk about Bentley MicroStation, it integrates with Bentley MicroStation Series 1, 2, and 3 specifically. This is just a link from the Knowledge uh, Network at Autodesk if you wanna know more about the software. So what about the software download? It's very easy. If you have a subscription to AEC Collection from Autodesk, you have this icon that shows up on your uh, home screen. Once you click on the Autodesk desktop app, a new window or panel will open up. You have to log in if you have not already logged in. And once you're logged in into that panel, you have here a functionality to access your complete list of entitled uh, uh, products. You click on this, access my entitled uh, products, and then another window will open or show up uh, in, in your web browser. Here, this is the desktop manager or your entitlement manager. All what you have to do, just click on all products and services, search for vehicle tracking, and there you go. You can download it directly and it will work with Civil 3D, AutoCAD, and AutoCAD architecture. Or else, you can directly go into this link, manage.autodesk.com, and there, log in, and then you will know what products you are entitled for. You're entitled for AC collection, you are entitled for Civil 3D and vehicle tracking, you're entitled for Revit. Everything will show up there in your entitlements list. So this is very quickly how you can check for the entitlement, the license, download it, and make it work. Now, because this plugin works on top of AutoCAD, 
and other tools, it's very important to set the right standards and configure it properly before you proceed with your projects. The first thing to do inside of Civil 3D, as we already know, either use your uh, company template, so you upload or you open your company template and then you start your design with, or else if you're starting from scratch, you don't have a template, you just have to go to the uh, prospector tab and then from the drawings, you can hit right click and set the standards. Most importantly, we're talking here about units. The measurement units, uh, if you're using imperial versus metric, uh, the speed, if it's in kilometer or miles per hour, once you set all those, you save them, and there you go. You're ready to start your design or simulation inside of vehicle tracking. The second step would be is by going into the vehicle tracking tab, hitting the settings uh, button there, and then setting or configuring the settings of vehicle tracking. The same thing regarding uh, the uh, speed, regarding the uh, distance, the measurement units, etc. regarding if you want to save those settings as your default settings for all upcoming projects, or this is just one project that you want to work on and you have other projects with different settings. These two steps are mandatory for you to have an accurate swept path analysis and accurate design of the roundabout of the uh, parking design and the swept path analysis altogether. Two steps, setting the standards or the configuration in Civil 3D, and then in uh, vehicle tracking. Okay, so we talked about three major capabilities. We have the roundabout design, we have the parking design, and we have swept path analysis. Let's see how this tool can help us design roundabouts very quickly, very easily, including all the components of a roundabout. So what will AVT help you do, actually, is create the standard compliant designs, because whatever you create in vehicle tracking, it's based on, the sta on a standard. So you pick a standard, for example, if you have a standard for uh, Turkey or Istanbul, Istanbul roundabout standard, and then everything you design will be based on, upon that design. It will also recognize the geometry and direction of travel. So we drive here on the right side of the road versus in UK, they drive on the left. It will recognize that as well. It will also help you design all of the crossings, the vehicle paths, the speed of the incoming approaches or legs, check for visibility analysis like we do in civil, and even more other components. And definitely, because it's fully integrated with Civil 3D, if you have a Civil 3D corridor, you can create a roundabout that targets into the existing surface, and you can create sub-assemblies or attach sub-assemblies to create the final corridor and generate the uh, material quantities that you need. So, in order to sketch that roundabout, it's very easy. I'm going to come to that uh, video in a second. But there are many ways in which you can modify that design of a roundabout. It's based on a design standard. You have geometric constraints. You can type in certain constraints. I want the uh, entering radius to a roundabout to be this much, the exiting radius this much, the apron, the uh, diameter, etc., etc. Or else you can use the grip editing. So here you have grips like points or markers where you can move them the way that you like, and everything will update in 3D. We're talking here about an intelligent dynamic design. Now, if you're working with plain AutoCAD, you're working with 2D, you don't have a terrain surface, a turn surface, or a digital uh, elevation model, then what you will get is basically a 2D layout of the roundabout. If you are working with Solid 3D, as you will see in a second, you will have the full corridor. And here, where you can set, basically, if you want to just create the alignments, the corridors, and the profiles, etc. Now, there are many other objects, but this is what the uh, tool will help you do. So it will help you sketch this roundabout, design it, taking into account the legs and approaches. I'm just going to talk about the terminology a little bit for those of you who don't uh, work with civil 3D or uh, civil design. So when we talk about the legs, this is the first leg of a roundabout. This is second, third, and fourth. Basically, the alignments going into the roundabout. The approach could be this approach. For example, north approach going to the south approach. We have the entry and exit. Depending from which site you're coming, so this is, could be the entry, and this could be the exit. There is an entry curve over here, entry radius, we call it, and there is an exit radius. And all of these maintain a certain design speed into which we're allowed to get into the roundabout and get outside of it. All of these are already incorporated in the tool. Not only that, it also helps you to design the splitter island. So all of these islands that you see at the legs that split the uh, opposite sides of the roadway, the rumble strips, 
and uh, speed striping. So if you have anything related to road marking, to signage, it also has a very powerful uh, capability to place those signboards where they're supposed to be in 3D and also uh, mark the uh, road marking uh, all the way on all legs and approaches. And definitely do some uh, analysis on the route about in terms of visibility, speed, and we'll see later on in terms of clashes as well. Here I'm just showing the uh, extensive list of objects. So whenever you create that roundabout, you sketch it very quickly. You have this extensive list, and each and every object has its own parametric panel where you can modify as per your design requirements. This is another screenshot from the tool. So it has placed the uh, signboards in 3D and any uh, required road marking. Let me show you a very quick video. So here we're working, let's suppose, in AutoCAD. We don't have a terrain model. We have just proposed alignments in AutoCAD. And we want to design a roundabout that's somehow about the cross or intersection between these two. So we just activate the uh, auto's vehicle tracking. We go to the roundabout tool. We pick the roundabout standard, as we've done here. We pick the surfaces, if we have any. In this case, we don't have any. We assume that we have an existing surface. We pick the uh, road marking uh, software that we're using or plugin. In this case, I'm going to use the standard one that comes with vehicle tracking. Just set a few parameters, and then name the uh, roundabout or the junction, and hit OK. It will prompt me to locate where I want to have the roundabout. It will create it, and then it will tell me where are the legs. And as you can see, with just two clicks, I'm creating a full roundabout with everything, with the apron, with the entering and existing curves. If I move those alignments, everything updates in 2D or in 3D, as we'll see in Civil 3D. Very dynamic, very interactive, and very intelligent. And more importantly, it's design-based. So everything that changes is based on the design. Now, once we move to Civil 3D, here, for those of you who work with Civil 3D, we have road alignments with chainages. We have a terrain surface. And the same process goes on. We pick the roundabout center. We pick the alignments. And here, you have much more intelligence in the sense it's going to give you uh, the design speed and will give you some indication in green, red, or yellow, or amber. If you change the roundabout using the grips, these will update automatically. So it will warn you that, for example, the entering speed is going too low or it's too high for this uh, roundabout. This is in terms of laying the uh, roundabout, changing it using the grips, and having a feel of how it will perform in real life. Not only that, we can also have a visual understanding of each and every component within the roundabout. So here, for example, we want to change the spitter islands or the number of approaches or lanes going into the roundabout. We can do so by the uh, palette or the parametric uh, window. So here, we specify our parameters. And then we see everything updating here in uh, 2D visualization. Once we're happy with our design, and we, fi we find this is OK, this is what we have in mind, then we can commit to it. We apply it OK, and everything updates in 3D. So as you can see, it's very linked, parametric to visual, and then finally to a 3D model. So we're going to hit. Uh, oh, here, we're just selecting the option of creating a corridor. So not just the 2D layout. We want a 3D corridor. And then we hit OK, and it is created. Now, you can go further with the design. For example, as you can see, automatically, I can sketch the uh, passenger, or what do you call it, the uh, pedestrian uh, crosswalk. You can place the signboards as per your design standard. So for example, in Istanbul, you have to have, for example, one, at 100 meter increments, one signboard mentioning there is a uh, roundabout ahead. And if you move any of those objects, they will update themselves in 3D as per your design in the roundabout. You don't have to you know, uh, pick and click too many grips to make them work uh, as, as the way that you need. It's like intel intelligent components interconnected. And this is for the roundabout. And then there you go. This is the final. Uh, the result that we get, we have the final corridor, 3D mo uh, model corridor, and it's targeting into the existing surface. So we can get the grading, we can get the cut and fill quantities for uh, cost estimation. 
Okay, for those of you who use InfraWorks, and I highly encourage you to use InfraWorks, there is a very good workflow between InfraWorks and Civil 3D. The, the same tools that allow us to create uh, roundabouts in uh, InfraWorks, we can make use of them in Civil 3D. Here, I'm just importing the InfraWorks model very quickly to Civil, and you will see we've got all of the sketch uh, roundabouts in InfraWorks inside of Civil as 3D uh, corridor models. So no time is wasted, no effort is wasted in InfraWorks to create those components and then using them in Civil 3D for detailed design. As you can see, the same process goes on and on. Also, once you're done from the detailed design in Civil 3D, you can move that design into InfraWorks for visualization. So InfraWorks is the right tool for visualizing infrastructure projects. What you need to do, just import the Civil 3D drawing as is, just tick the components that you want to import, and these will show up in InfraWorks in 3D. Now, there might be an issue with uh, linking the materials, but you can very easily use the uh, library or the palette, which my colleague talked about, and you can uh, like drag and drop into those components to show, for example, this is a curb stone, this is a pavement, sidewalk, this is asphalt, etc. And within a few minutes, you are able to finalize the design and have it there in 3D in context. OK, what about we were done with the conceptual design, we're done with the detailed design in Civil 3D, we're done with visualizing the design in InfraWorks. What if I want to confirm, for example, the performance of that junction, whether a roundabout or an intersection? Why not use the traffic simulation in InfraWorks to do that? This is a very quick video that shows you that you can check the performance of each. So I've sped it up. It should be, take like maybe five minutes. It's going to take less than a minute. You can directly see that, for example, my proposed intersection will have a lot of delay on those uh, approaches, which is a, a big concern for me. A lot of delay, a lot of queue length. Now I change the design into a roundabout. I pick this area, and I tell it I want to run a software uh, simulation. And I make sure I add some more lanes. I make sure that the traffic simulation, traffic congestion is not anymore valid. OK, so this is regarding roundabout and the roundabout workflow between InfraWorks, Civil 3D, and uh, back to InfraWorks. Let's talk about the swift path analysis. OK, I know this is boring stuff, but this is what Wikipedia has to say about uh, the Ackerman principle. So this tool works based on a principle of uh, Ackerman. Ackerman was actually a principle developed by a German uh, guy named George uh, Lankens. Perger, if I spelled it right. But however, his lawyer or his uh, colleague, Rodolf Ackerman, patented it uh, as a new principle, and that's why it got named as Ackerman. So the, the real guy who invented this principle is George from Germany. The major thing about this uh, uh, theory is that it basically pr predicts the movement of any vehicle, steered vehicle, because if you check any vehicle on Earth, if you check your car, once you turn the steering wheel, you will find that one wheel is turning more than the other. Notice it. That's because this wheel has to travel, if you're taking the left turn, has to travel a shorter radius than this, this wheel, right? So one has to turn more than the other in order for this vehicle not to skid to the side or have a lot of friction, and then you have components to change in the car. This is the basis of the Ackerman principle, having a center point, turning point, where it extends to those turning wheels and predicts the movement of the vehicle. What Ackerman did, or what actually George did, he simplified the process to create what we call a spine vehicle, a simplification, in order to project the uh, directory or the, sorry, the uh, trajectory of the vehicle itself. This is, I know it's a boring stuff. The whole principle is about uh, mathematics and physics, uh, dynamics basically, and the three major components are the wheelbase, what is the width of the uh, axle of the car, the maximum steering angle this car can travel, and the minimum turning radius. So if the car wants to go from here to make a U-turn, it needs five meters or four meters, etc. These are certain assumptions. I'm not going to go through, but the whole assumption is about that the car will not skid or slip. It's all four tires are supposedly touching with the road. Otherwise, the maneuverability of the vehicle is uh, totally different. Now, autodesk vehicle tracking addresses the movement of many types of vehicles. We have a huge library of over 1,000 uh, vehicles in there. 
And these include cars and trucks, construction vehicles, forklifts and carts, light rail, aircraft, and special vehicles, as I'm going to touch upon later on. So everything you need is found there. You want, for example, Boeing 7, uh, 777, you will find it there. You want a, spef a specific truck, you will find it there. No need to create a, a new vehicle yourself, although you can do it if you want to. So it's just a list of the types of vehicles that we support out of the box. So these come standard with the uh, tool itself. Let's see some applications for roads and highway design. So this is a very quick video as well. Here we're picking a type of vehicle. So you can search here. There's a text box. Let's suppose I want to look for a school bus. And I want to see if that school bus can make the turn all the way up to the roundabout without hitting, for example, a curb stone or a splitter island or any object on the road. As you can see, the path updates as we move the grips uh, on, on, on in 2D. And here we're checking another way of if we have a truck that can make the turn, go inside, go back, and then park, reverse into a loading or unloading station. Let's suppose a mall, and they have certain supplies that you want to deliver. You're making this in 2D, but the software is creating it in 3D. You can animate that movement, and you can change the visual perspective. So you can look forward, backward. You can even check the rear view mirrors to see if this uh, like a driver can make the turn or not, or it's very difficult. You can check for clashes. So here we're checking clashes. You can place the profile of that vehicle, its uh, specific characteristics. You can run vis visual analysis if that driver at a certain height will be able to see the road or the curve clearly or not. And then finally, see a visual representation of the possible clashes. A green area means there is no clash. A yellow one, uh, like there is a minimum clearance. If there is a red, there is a major clash. Now, the major functionality of uh, Sotpath analysis is that the vehicle attaches itself to the road. So once I click here, I click, I click there, it all auto automatically shows me the, if you look, in, in this instance here. So we just click here and there, and it's making the whole turn. Here and there, it's making the whole turn. So it's very parametric and understands roads, understands surfaces inside of Sevri. You don't have to pick the points all the way yourself. It will know if there is a possible path or not. OK. The major also power of uh, vehicle tracking is that not only it's simulating those movements, but it's also representing any possible clashes. So we have 2D vertical clearance. You can just have a uh, profile and let the vehicle of your choice, the design vehicle, go along that path. And the software on its own will highlight any possible uh, areas of uh, problems. Or else run the 3D ground conflict and see uh, any possible clashes. This is an example of 2D verification. So we have a road alignment. We've designed our road. We want to verify that it's OK. So we run the uh, 2D uh, ver ver clash verification here. As you can see, it's a road alignment in civil. We have a thin surface. We're checking the profile. We're applying uh, the design vehicle. That's a design vehicle. We have there the para uh, parameters, the overhaul length, width, clearance from the ground, et cetera. And then we run that vehicle across that whole uh, profile, road profile. And it identified certain problem areas, whether that is an elevated uh, speed hump, whether that is a problem in the road, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is another way of selecting uh, or checking for uh, clashes. So here we have a corridor or a 3D model inside of Civil 3D, and the same thing happens. It's the previous example, but with some more details. So we have a trailer, and that trailer could be many units. So we have the trailer head, and we have the uh, other units behind it. We can uh, create documentation uh, for our design and verification. So we have the details of the vehicle. We run that vehicle across that path. We have uh, some sort of analysis, including visibility analysis. Once we're done with the design, we can also check for the clashes uh, in centimeters, millimeters, or feet. So we'll specify what is the type of clearance we want to check for. And you'll see in a second that it will create for me the uh, visualization for that uh, clearance problem there. OK, maybe that one is not enough. I want to see numerical values. I can also ask the software, please tell me what each color is representing and change those representations. So in a second, you will see that I'm going to copy paste the uh, legend to the side of the model, 
in order to see that, for example, the yellow, we have 0 to 16, 0 0.16 feet clearance. Anything that is below green, for example, is a problem for me, and I need to change the road cross-section or uh, road profile. Now, as I said, you can create your own vehicles inside of vehicle tracking. So you have over 1,000 vehicles, but still, if you have the um, data sheet of that vehicle, the parameters, you can create those in uh, vehicle tracking inside of Civil 3D or AutoCAD very quickly, and you can combine units. So you have a specific trailer that is made and manufactured in Istanbul or in, in Turkey. With specific parameters, you can attach those different components together, and they will function perfectly inside of the software. Finally, you can verify that your design is correct using the visuals. So look what will happen to this wheel once it goes on top of the curb here. So sometimes, maybe it's too close in AutoCAD to see that there is a problem in 2D. You can run this simulation and see in 3D if there are any bumps, any problems in your corridor, or the vehicle will be clashing with any road objects. And definitely create the road documentation, uh, project documentation, the way that you like. Let's see for buildings, and I think my colleague Salvatore already covered this. So there are many uses for vehicle tracking inside of buildings. Here is a loading bay, so suppose like a big storage area. You have the trucks. You can check for the uh, possibility of the trucks going backwards and unloading stuff. Not only that, we have also the vehicles, the forklifts, that pick those containers and place them on the storage shelves. You can check for the maneuverability of those vehicles within your uh, storage area or storage building. If they can make the move, it's easy for them to go there. If they go there, will they hit another shelf, etc., etc. So this is one way of using this powerful tool inside of uh, AutoCAD or AutoCAD Civil 3D. What also we can use is in uh, hospitals. So here we're just simulating the movement of the forklift inside of our storage area and placing the load or the package inside uh, the storage location. This is a hospital, which my colleague showed earlier. So here we have the emergency bed or the scooter, mobility scooter that comes from the uh, ambulance. It's moving inside there, and then they move it maybe to another bed. You will see uh, we're going to go into, for example, the emergency room. We're moving into another bed. Usually they take the patient and they move him to some other bed inside the hospital, then into the emergency room, then into the uh, operation room, etc., etc. So helps you design more efficient and user-friendly uh, buildings. So you can see there if it's clashing with any uh, tools or equipment inside the hospital. OK, let's see how we can apply this also in light rail and airport design. I'm going to focus on airport design because light rail is very similar to trailers and vehicles. So inside of this tool, it's not about the profile of the vehicle, but also we have different types of driving the vehicle, the car or the truck inside the AutoCAD environment. We have auto drive, we have follow drive, we have others as well. The difference is, in terms of airplanes, airplanes usually move on a certain path. They don't go like sideways, right? Whereas with cars, we have the option of going sideways. This is where we apply the example of follow drive. So we assign a certain alignment in AutoCAD Civil 3D, which is supposed to be the taxiway, and the airplane will follow that path very quickly. We, we check for the airplane itself, but we also check the uh, other support vehicles. Once you uh, see the airplane parking in the gate uh, near the tunnel, you will see that many vehicles attached to this airplane. We have the food, we have the sewer, we have the AC, we have the one that takes all the negative charges, etc., etc. So also we have those support vehicles in the tool, and we can check if these vehicles can make it from the terminal to the uh, airplane safely, and they can leave without clashing with any other vehicles as well. And definitely with the pushback maneuvers, because this one entail, uh, entails two vehicles. We have the airplane, and we have this small vehicle that attaches to the back of the airplane or the front and moves the airplane backwards. So you have two different vehicles attached to one another, and these are already available in the library as well. And this is where we use another, tool, another way of driving those vehicles called arc or bearing drive. This is once you try the tool, you will be able to know what is the difference of each. A very simple example. So this is an airport project. We're picking the uh, design, uh, air, design airplane for the airport. In this case, I think it's uh, Boeing or something. Let's see. I forgot. Actually, actually, it's. Uh, I think it's a Boeing. Yeah, Boeing. So we picked the type of that airplane, Boeing 787, Dreamliner, or 
777-300, whatever, we have the profile of that vehicle. We, we accept that profile. And then we start to sketch the, uh, we pick the type of uh, drive, arc or bearing drive. Then we attach the airplane to the terminal where it's supposed to be parked. We align it properly. And then we start maneuvering this airplane in a pushback maneuver. So we attach uh, the other support vehicle here, the pushback maneuver, and then we start sketching that in uh, 2D. Now, definitely, that attaches to 3D if we have a terrain surface. And then we can assign another way of driving that vehicle, say, follow drive, uh, following a certain taxiway. And we can see if that airplane is able to do it or not. There is any clashes, certain clearances that are not met according to a design or standard. And animated as well in 3D as we've done before. So you see there are many other uh, applications for AVT, not just for buildings or infrastructure, but also for transportation. Now I'm going to talk about uh, parking lot design. And this is the last feature inside the tool. Um, there, is, there is a kind of a workflow that is between the Autodesk tools. So we, have, we start with Civil 3D to create the surface. And from there, we can sketch, for example, the parking layout. We might use Revit. So for architects or designers uh, of buildings, you design usually in Revit. I'm going to show you how you can move that into civil very quickly. Use AVT for the simulation uh, and the design of the parking uh, layout. And InfraWorks and 3 ds Max for the storytelling or the visualization. And the cool thing is, is that all of these tools that you see here are part of the AEC collection. So whenever you have an AEC collection uh, license, you have access to all of these automatically. You don't have to purchase any uh, extra license. OK, before I talk about the lay layout of parking design, very quickly, the basic terminology. Once we talk about a parking lot or a car lot, it's actually this whole area over here, the whole piece of land that we want to design or lay out. The parking spot is. This one in particular. So this is one parking spot, second, third, fourth, etc. The parking row is any number of parking uh, spots that are interconnected somehow. And this is why we'll see how AVT understands that these are interconnected. And finally, a parking structure is a building, usually a multi-story building that is above ground or under the ground, that is made for uh, parking vehicles. OK. Inside the AVT itself, we have the capability to manage the parking rows, the parking bays, if we have bays for the parking, we have access roads getting into or out of the parking. I'm going to show you in the video. And we're able also to generate reports. Because you, as a designer, once you have a certain piece of land, the owner of this piece of land, he wants to know that for this area, you were able to generate 200 parking lots. And he wanted, for example, 220. You can justify for them why you are not able to get 220. So this is why the parking report is very useful. And we have many built-in parking reports. Unfortunately, we don't have one for Turkey, but it's very easy for you to create. So what you, ca you can do here is basically copy-paste one of the parking standards. Let's suppose anyone uh, from Europe copy-paste it, and then modify the parameters, save it as uh, Istanbul or Tur Turkey parking report. The editing of those bays and uh, parking lots is very easy, and there are many powerful features inside in order to edit the parking, in order to, for example, do the islands in between, these, these islands that you find at the parking entrance and exit, and definitely create those access roads that you see there. So this process took me like maybe 10 minutes, but I've made the video very uh, quick. So I've picked the parking design uh, of choice. And then I have a certain piece of land parking lot uh, that I want to design. As you can see, by just picking points, I'm able to sketch or lay out those OK, those designs very quickly. I can modify them, as you can see, and everything updates in 3D. And once I'm done, I can very quickly generate a report that you see there. So it will show me, for example, I have uh, this much number of uh, parking rows, parking bays, et cetera, et cetera. OK. This part I'm going to skip because my uh, colleague Salvatore already uh, covered. It's moving the 3D structure from Revit to Civil 3D, creating the clashes, et cetera, and showing that there is no clash with the uh, ramp itself. Finally, and this is the final step, 
the integration between those tools. So you're done with Civil 3D and AVT, you move that design, that same plot of land, I moved into InfraWorks, and I've created different animations for it. So I can see it in uh, plan, I can see it in road, road profile, I can even showcase different alternatives. So this one without the canopies, the covers, here with the canopies. And finally, you can definitely generate a video in uh, InfraWorks, it's very easy. This video takes two to three minutes to generate in a storyboard scenario. You can zoom in into that project, visualize it, and share this video with the client uh, as a whole. By the way, this model that I've created, I used Civil 3D for the surface, I used InfraWorks for the storytelling, and those buildings that you see there are coming from Revit, and the layout of the parkings are from Autodesk Vehicle Tracking. So perfect integration between the four tools together. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, we're running out of time. This is my email address in case you have any questions or you want to know more about the software. This is my LinkedIn account, and this is my YouTube channel where I usually post those videos and my presentations online. I have some about Civil 3D, InfraWorks, uh, traffic simulation, and definitely this one I'm going to post it there uh, once I get the recording later on. So thank you very much.